Good morning, my dear children. Welcome to B and C B S E English Online Class. I hope you all are doing good. Yes, yes. Okay, dear children. So today, before we start our class, I want to appreciate the students those who have completed your homework and copying your notes and send it to me. Yes, I really, really want to appreciate each and every one, my dear children. That's good. Congratulations and keep it up. Okay, so dear children, not only for English subject but also for the remaining subjects. Okay, kindly complete your homework, copy your notes in your notebooks, and take a snapshot. Send it to your subject teachers. Okay, don't forget it. Will you do it? Yes. You will definitely gonna do it, isn't it? Because you are my good children, huh? Okay, okay, that's good, my dear children. Yes, let's get into our today's topic. So, dear children, today we are going to learn a new poem. Okay, so what's the title of the poem here? The shed. Yes. So, children, do you know what is a shed? Do you have any idea about the shed? Yes. So, for example, we can say waiting shed, cow shed, tool shed, wood shed, etc. Isn't it? Yes. So these are the shed. So what's a shed? So children, it's not the room situated inside your main house, but it's a small room. It's away from your main house. Okay. So why we are using this shed? So for example, we are using this for storing things. Our store we keep our animals there. Uh, we we can keep our tools or vehicles, etc. Okay, so we cannot stay there. Okay, so to keep keep all the things, any other things, we can use this shed. But outside of our main house. Okay, dear children. So let me show a picture for you. Yes. So have you all seen this picture? It's given in the page number forty-eight in your book. Page number forty-eight in your book. So have you all seen this? So children, let me ask you a question. So as soon as you see this picture in the screen or reads in your textbook, what is fluttering in your mind? What comes in your mind? Yes, something comes to your mind. What's that? It's a scary room. Yes, can you see that? Look at the door here. There are cracks on the wall, broken windows. Isn't it? Look at the shed. How does it look? It looks scary, isn't it, dear children? Yes. Okay. Now move into our poem. So before that, let me introduce a person named Frank Flynn. You know who is Frank Flynn? Is there any connection between this poem and this man, Frank Flynn? Yes, yes, definitely. Yes, my dear children, because he is the poet who has written this poem, "The Shed." So, what's the name of the poet? Frank Flynn. Okay, dear children. So, dear children, before we read our poem, quickly we have a short summary of this poem, "The Shed." Okay. So here, the poet he himself is the speaker of this poem. So in this poem, the poet he describes his experience. Okay, dear children. Yes. So what is the poem about? The poem is about a shed, isn't it? So a shed that's a small room away from the main house. So whose main house is that? Yes, it's obviously the poet's main house. Okay, dear children. So a shed is a small room away from the main house. Okay, dear children. Yes. So it's located at the bottom of poet's garden. So where is it located? Yes, it's located at the bottom of poet's garden. Okay. Yes. <clears throat> So here, children, if you have a look in that picture clearly, so you can see the condition of the shed there. So all of you take page number forty-eight first. Yes, just have a quick look. Yes, how does the shed look like? Yes, how? How is it? It's in worst condition. 
isn't it so because of this condition this poet always he feels that somebody is staring at him somebody is peeping through the window somebody is staring at him inside the house he thinks like that why he imagines like that but why why because his brother he always threatens him how he is threatening him he threatens like a ghost is there inside the shed okay so the ghost hides itself under the rotten floorboards okay if you go inside the shed it will come out and attack you so this is how his brother he often threatens him so that's why this poet he feels always somebody is staring inside the house okay dear children yes but eventually he comes to know the fact that there is no ghost okay then he thinks that he knows that his brother he likes to keep the shed for his den his brother he wants to keep the shed for his own okay so that's why he tells lies to his brother i mean to the poet there is a ghost don't go inside so this is how his brother threatens them okay dear children yes so finally what happened this poet he overcomes his fear okay he overcomes his fear and he knows the truth that there is no ghost literally okay then finally the poem ends like i will enter the shed one day okay this is how the poem ends so i'll go into that shed on day zone okay he is telling that he needs to go inside he needs to enter inside he wants to enter inside the shed on day but he doesn't know when he is going to enter okay so children this is the short summary of the poem so now we'll read the poem line by line okay and we'll have explanation for that okay dear children so okay i hope you all are ready with your book so this is stanza 1 given in page number 48 let me read the first line there's a shed at the bottom of our garden yes so the poet starts his poem like there's a shed at the bottom of our garden so where the shed it's there at the bottom of the poet's garden okay so have you all seen the shed there yes okay children the second line with a spider's web hanging across the door so here is the door broken door isn't it so they are a spider's web is hanging okay yes can you see the picture yes yeah, so this is how the door looks like okay dear children yes then the next line the hinges are rusty and creak in the wind when i am in bed i lie and i listen so in these lines when the poet is taking rest so there is a pin drop silent at that time he can listen the sound of hinges okay this rusty hinges it makes creak sound so this is hinges dear children so this is how the hinges of this door looks like okay yes dear children because it's an old hinge an old door okay dear children yes okay <clears throat> next i'll open that door one day so this poet he says that i'll open that door on day so this is the explanation for stanza 1 let's move on to stanza 2 there is a dusty old window around at that side with three cracked panes of glass okay there is a window dusty old window so have we all seen the picture Yes dear children yes this is a dusty old window of the shed the scariest shed okay yes so here dear children the three panes of glass it's broken okay the window has three cracked panes of glass so 1 2 3 these three panes are broken one is remains okay dear children yes then 
I often think there is someone staring at me each time that I pass. So this poet, he imagines, he thinks that there is someone staring at him inside the house. So whenever he passes that shed, he thinks like, he imagines like there is somebody staring at him every time when he passes. Okay? Yes. So again, I'll be through that window on day. So he thinks that. So I also will enter inside the shed and I'll also peep through that window on day. Okay. Yes, dear children. Let's move on to stanza 3, page number 49. My brother says there is a ghost in the shed who hides under the rotten floorboards. So, have you seen the rotten floorboards? Yes, can you see this picture, my dear children? So, if you see any horror movie, you can find this rotten floorboard. So, children, under this floorboard, a ghost is staying. Okay, so his brother, he often threatens the poet like there is a ghost inside the shed. Okay, it hides under the rotten floor boards. Okay, dear children, yes. And if I ever dare to set foot inside, he'll jump out and chop off my head. So this is how his brother, he always threaten him. So he is frightened to go inside the shed. Okay, dear children, if he goes inside, what will happen? The ghost, it will jump out and chop off his head. Okay, yes, so this is how. So under this rotten floorboards, you can find a spacious room. Okay, so inside the room, the ghost hides itself. If you go inside, what will happen? He will jump out and chop off your head. Okay, so this is how the brother, his brother, he always threatens him. Okay, so he is frightened to get inside the shed. So he again concludes the stanza like, but I'll take a peek one day. So definitely I'm going to take a risk to enter the shed one day. Okay, dear children. Yes. Let's move on to next stanza, the same page, 49, stanza 4. So stanza 4 starts like, I know that there is not really a ghost. So finally, the poet comes to the conclusion. Now he is grown up, no more child in. Okay. So eventually he comes to know the truth that there is not a real ghost. There is no one inside the shed. Okay. My brother tells lies because now... The poet is grown up, okay? No more childish playing there. Okay, dear children. So now he's grown up and he understands that his brother, he tells lies to keep the shed for his den. So his brother, he wants to keep the shed for himself, okay? He wants to keep the shed for his own. So that's why he continuously tells lies to him. Okay, and he threatens him. Okay, dear children. And the poet, he understands that there is not anyone staring or making strange noises. Okay, so the hinges, it makes noise only because of the wind. So when the door is moving because of the wind, the hinges, the old hinges, it's making noise. Okay, now the poet comes to the conclusion that there is not anyone staring or making strange noises. Okay, yes, so this is not real. Now the poet gets his knowledge because he is grown up. Okay. Yes, and the next line say that and the spider has been gone from his web. So there is no spider now, only the web is there. Okay, since I don't know when, but I don't know when the spider is disappeared, but now the spider is not there in that web. Okay, 
So, children, the poet continues. I'll go into that shed one day soon, but not just it. Okay, so the poet it's clearly seen that he is afraid. He is frightened to get inside that shed. Okay, dear children. So he says again that I'll go into that shed one day soon, but not just. it okay so still he does not clear himself he does not know that when he is going to enter inside the shed but the poet he ends the poem like i'll go into that shed one day soon but not just it but he doesn't know when okay yes children this is how the poem ends here okay So children now we are going to see what are the poetic devices used in this poem okay yes the first one rhyming words you know what is a rhyming word yes it's rhyming it's a rhythm isn't it yes you know what is rhyming word yes two words have the same sound okay yes okay children so here stands of one has a rhyming word garden listen each stanza have one rhyming word okay dear children yes so here stanza 2 glass pass then shed head this is in stanza 3 and stanza 4 also has a rhyming word that is then when okay yes then move on to the next poetic device called alliteration so you know what is alliteration do you have any idea about this my dear children yes so the alliteration that means the first the first i mean the first beginning the beginning of the word has the same sound yes the beginning of the particular word that has the same sound the beginning of two words okay dear children so alliteration someone staring so 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 sound here okay you can find this alliteration in stanza 2 line 3 okay and then comes to next one stanza 3 line 2 who hides with sound her sound okay her her who hides okay dear children here w is silent okay yes then move on to next stanza that is stanza 4 in line 2 you can find the right sorry alliteration tells to so tells to so what's the alliteration there tells to t t t sound okay then again if you come to line 3 you can find the same sound set staring strange so so okay and then dear children <coughs> again the next poetic device is used here imaginary so what's the next poetic device imaginary okay you know what is imagination yes it's not real but you are just imagining isn't it yes okay so here what does the poet imagine he imagined that there is a ghost inside the shed what does he imagine he imagines that there is a ghost inside the shed okay dear children yes and the last one repetition so the words are repeated that is repetition so from this term you can identify that repetition means repeat repetitive isn't it so here children you can find two words that is i will and then one day okay these are the two words that are repeated in this poem so each stanza the last line of each stanza has these words the last line starts with i'll and ends with one day okay this is the repetition in this poem okay children i hope you understand the poem very well yes if you have any doubt my dear children you are welcome to either call me or text me okay and don't forget to attend your zoom class today yes okay okay dear children let's wind up our class here till we meet in our next class bye for now stay home stay safe thank you my dear children have a nice day